Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for June 12th, 2013. I'm Matt Gradwell from Uppercut Woodworks. You can find my uh, site on the web at uppercutwoodworks.com and you can find me on Twitter at Uppercut Wood. If you're watching the video um, and you want to join in the conversation, you're going to have to follow along on Twitter using hashtag WoodChat. Normally I'd send you over to uppercutwoodworks.com slash woodchat slash chatroom, but the uh, tweet chat uh, website plugin we were using has been acquired by a new company and they're no longer supporting it and that's why uh, we're starting a little bit late tonight. Anyway, uh, with that aside, with me tonight is Scott Meek. Say hey Scott. Hey Scott. Oh, wait. <laughs> um, Chris Wong is in a class tonight. Um, I think he's making guitars. Um, but we are going to... Cigar box. Oh, it's, cigar a cigar, box. it's a cigar box guitar. That's right. <clears throat> we're going to start off... Um, a couple weeks ago, we kicked off Chris's, uh, what we're calling the Telephone Game Design Challenge. If you want to participate, what we're basically doing is Chris started with the table design. He handed it off to me. I'm going to make some changes, and uh, those changes are already posted. And then it's going to go to Vic Hubbard and Andy Brennell and Greg Palmer, and Scott's going to take a look at it too. Um, and each person's going to make um, some changes. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screen share here, and I'm going to show off um, Chris's first uh, design, and then I'll talk about the changes I made and um, some of the dilemmas I faced and some of the things I saw in his design that I that I wanted to change. But um, So let me hit screen share here, and we'll get going. If you have questions, make sure you just tweet them with the um, hashtag WoodChat, and Scott and I will pick those up and make sure we... Um, Make sure we address those. So here comes the screen share. All right. Is that showing up, Scott? Showing up for me. All right. So this is Chris's design. Um, this is in SketchUp Make. This is the new version of SketchUp. That was one of the other challenges. Is that Chris used a different program? Um, uh, it got converted over to a format that SketchUp would read, but in that it created a lot more. Um, a lot more polygons. So you can see the legs here are, are divided, everything's divided into triangles. So when I looked at Chris's design um, from this angle, um, to me the design was two tables in one. Up here you see this standard apron with a slight arch, but down here you see this um, pretty cool offset wedge stretcher um, design. And I really liked this. This reminded me of Flash Gordon, so I now call this table the Ming the Merciless table. Um, it's a desk, so you'll see it. There's no front apron. There is a there's an apron. Or sorry, there's no back apron where the where the um, where you sit. But the stretcher is going to be right where your legs are, so that's kind of a challenge. Um, and then there's this uh, apron across the front, which has the same slight arch. So. And he's got this drop, angular drop in the top, which kind of echoes um, the stretcher here. So, so I wanted to make a lot of changes to this table, and I wanted to kind of go with the Ming the Merciless part of the design. Um, now I'll show you what changes I made um, and why, and kind of talk about some of the dilemmas I faced. So, um, so let me let me. I'm gonna have to change my screen share to the other sketch. Let's see here. No, hold on. I gotta get close that, and I'm gonna have to. And then I'll screen share this one. Now you you mentioned something on a new version of SketchUp. I'm I didn't realize a new version. This is something that just came out. Yeah. So Google sold. I knew that. SketchUp to Trimble. I believe it's Trimble. And Trimble came up with SketchUp, um, a new version of SketchUp. They're calling their free version SketchUp Make. They have a pay version, and the pay version is five hundred and ninety dollars. Okay, so the price hasn't changed. Actually, the price has gone down for the paid version. Mm -hmm. It used to be seven hundred and fifty. SketchUp. That's, to me, that's crazy. Um, but we can talk about their business practices later. So, the dilemma I faced was that I wanted to make a lot of changes, but I didn't want to make too many changes because there's other people in the design process. So I really um, 
I really only ended up making two changes. What I did was I took this element here and I copied it up here um, so that you're, I'm echoing the design. Now, it was a little bit tough to do um, with all of the extra polygons that the conversion from Chris's CAD program into SketchUp made, but um, it actually imported them over as components, so I could edit I could edit the components. But you can see that there's some there's some cleaning up I wanted to do here. So so the other changes I wanted to make because this was a desk, I really wish I could have eliminated this huge piece going across right where the user right where the customer's legs would be. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was figure out a way to um, take this element here, echo it on the front, but have it drop down further so that, like a vanity panel so that when you're sitting at your desk, nobody's really looking at your crotch. Um, and then the legs are tapered, and I was actually thinking about inverting the taper um, to be to come out at the bottom. So they'd be straight down the top, and then on the two outside edges, I'd have them come out so they'd be more stout. Because um, for me, when I saw this, I thought of, when I saw this element here, I thought of uh, Ming the Merciless from Flash Gordon. It's almost an art, uh, art deco, retro futuristic feel. And I also thought a little bit about Battlestar Galactica. So those were the changes I made. Um, let's see, you're trying to rotate here. But I really think that this is going to be a big problem, at least in the desk. They're just going to be hitting their shins against it the whole time. Um, and so maybe keeping this wedge element, um, but echoing this stretcher in the front, not in the middle, and on the and across the top, and then maybe dropping that. So, what do you think, Scott? I don't know. Um, you say you you wanted to add the taper, but you you didn't. Is that what you? No, it's currently tapered. It, it tapers as it goes down. I actually wanted it to flare towards the bottom. Right. right. Yeah, so I wanted. Uh, to I was thinking. Uh, I just wasn't. I thought you said you did do that. I just wasn't seeing. No, it. I wanted to, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, and Chris was like, "Oh, I thought you were going to do more." And I, I guess one thing we didn't discuss about this was, are we letting people make one or two changes, or if they want to make ten changes, are we okay with ten changes? So, I say, my opinion is is more changes are okay as long as the, as long as you can see the progression. Like, if each step it looks like a completely different table. Yeah, if you just upload would, a completely different SketchUp file. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. might be an issue. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to look at it as just itself without trying to look at what, I would, what I'm wanting to change or trying to think of what I want to change Yeah. in the next step. But I agree with that lower stretcher. Um, that's, a, that's a tough one because it, it's kind of the main... It's one of the main aspects of the table, but yeah, because it because um, it really leads into this wedge on the end. Yeah, and when I so when I did the wedges on the on the top, I didn't, I didn't, I did. They're just they're just separate separate wedge pieces by themselves. Yeah. So, the part that I can't, I still am struggling with on this design. Um, and I I know we're just doing a design thing. We're not. You know, my my brain is trying to figure okay how do you make that and yeah for the purposes of what we're doing it's not about how we make it it's yeah. it's purely design uh, essentially we're even going design over function yeah and, and buildability so so i couldn't you know. stop myself from thinking about that either yeah. and what i thought is that even though it, even though it looks like there's a wedge in there i would either cut that out of one piece and then maybe inlay the wedge in so that structurally it was one piece, but the wedge looked like it was separate. Um, yeah. Because I, ca I can't see trying to glue that up from three pieces or domino it up or whatever. So I would probably cut one piece and then faux the wedge with an inlay or something. Yeah. So 
Uh, I also thought of if the wedge could be recessed back, it would be pretty cool. Yeah. So I think definitely um, because you've changed the aprons on the end, uh, on the sides, um, it makes the arch on the front, um, I guess, or what you're calling the front. Um, yeah. It, it makes that look out of place. Yeah. Drastically out of place. So. Yeah, and when I looked at Chris's original design. Looking at the end, I'd see this wedge detail, and then I'd see the arch here, and that was instantly like, "Wait a minute! You took two tables, and you yeah. and you shoved them together." Yeah. Um, and I decided to put the wedge detail because I thought it was more interesting, because the arch was is pretty standard. Yeah. So. So what changes? What changes? Are you? thinking about making? I don't know, but the first thing that's coming into my head right now is is uh, incorporating like, some sliding dovetail type of uh, transitions on these these drop downs. Um, Here? Somehow incorporating a dovetail into that for, for looks and for assembly purposes. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work yet, but then also for the top where the top insets down. Um, oh, here. Yeah. So, and essentially that is a massive dovetail. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I might, I might go that route. I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. The direction I'm going to take it. But. Okay. What do you think about the flare on the legs instead of a taper? I think the, I think the flare would have actually added some. I like, like you said, the Art Deco. Aspect of it, yeah. Um, part of me also almost wants to say just keep it another another week or another day or so, and then add make, that. I'll make all the changes I want to make. Yeah, um, I, I think it might it might be interesting. Cause I, I think even Chris mentioned uh, in reply, he said, "I don't see what you changed." Yeah, he said, "I thought you were going to change more." I mean, as long as we're cool with people making more than just a couple changes. Yeah. i say let's maybe limit it to, because uh, you've just made one change right now, right? Essentially. Yeah, I just, I just changed the end. Why don't, why don't we limit to three drastic changes? Okay. I'm cool with that. What, what, is, uh, what does the Twitterverse say? You guys are all talking about a uh, tweet deck. <laughs> Anybody listening to us? I'm kidding. <laughs> well, so then the change I'm going to make is I'm going to change this front, and I'm going to try and eliminate this, and I'm going to eliminate the stretcher, which means we'll probably um, create another one of these up front. Um, so I'll have two of these, and then I'll and I'll see if I can flare the legs as well. I'll try and clean up. I'll try and clean up the model. Remove all these extra. Is it still there? Yeah, I'm gonna try and remove all these extra lines as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, it definitely detracts from the from the design. Um, seeing all the polygons on there. Yeah, I think there's a way to hide what? those actually. When when you first said that it was the new version of SketchUp, I thought the new version of SketchUp was adding all that. I forgot that it was imported from another program, so that's probably why I did that. No, it's it, it was because it was an it was because it was um brought in brought in from a uh, another pro uh, Im Im imported from another program. Which I like that it reversed the faces movie. of that one leg. What's that? I like that it reversed the faces of the one leg. Yeah, I don't know how it did that, and, and <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but it made it. I think it made it hollow. Oh, that's why. Up inside it through the bottom. I'll try and fix that too, and ma make this a real SketchUp model. Um, but of course, Chris uses a different program. I think it's called Rhinoceros or Rhino or Rhino 3D is what he uses. So. Yeah. The other thing I want to add to this. Is uh, that I want to make part of the conversation on this um, challenge is color. I want to see how people would color it. Um, yeah. I, 
think I think for a table like this, for some reason, a very like a black is coming to mind. Yeah, Art Deco black, but um, but it could be interesting as people choose different colors for different pieces. Yeah. So, I think my my favorite part um, of Chris's original design, which which you haven't touched, is that top. I love the yeah. top with the with the drop down. Um, Writing surface or, or working surface. Yeah, um, but I'm I'm really really digging that. So. Okay, so you want to know what I thought about the crazy idea I had for the top? Yeah, what's up? Um, it looks like it's just sitting in there. Yeah. It looks like you should be able to grab that and pull it, and yeah. then slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if it did? What if it was like a pencil drawer, right? Those thin drawers that they have in some desks where yep. you can put, you know, a pencil and a ruler and a pair of scissors and a notepad, and, and that's about it. And so that would be that would be a pretty cool illusion where people go, oh, it looks like it slides. They grab it and they pull it, and it actually does slide. So, um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tackle that because that yeah. that would get past my three major changes. So. Yeah. And see, there again, my brain's immediately going to. How? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're getting to the how already. Yeah. Well, if if only if the top, of, sorry, if the top of this piece stayed, but this pulled out, right, then it would work. I think you'd have to have a, a much thicker top than what than how it's drawn. You, you might, yeah, you might. Um, so. Okay, well, I think that I'll, I think that's what I'll do then. Is I'll I'll do more changes to it and and, and see how it yeah. goes. So. Definitely, definitely add that uh, leg flare and uh, let's see what that. Yeah. That looks like. Yeah. So we're Adam gonna have to says, figure out what we do about the text chat now that tweet chat is broken. Yeah. That's gonna Adam be says uh, three changes seems fair. Hard to do design talk in less than 140 characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have um, I I know some internet nerds that I, that should be able to help me out fixing a uh, fixing the chat room. I would I would like it if it would let people log in with their Facebook account and Twitter account, make them create a new uh, account. But we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Um, so all right. So what other change? What changes are you considering making, Scott? I promise. I'm I really not sure. sure. I, at this point, I want to just wait to see. Uh, to okay. see what your, your other changes look like. Okay. Um, yeah. If you were to build, I'm not. I'm not sold on the the drop downs on the uh, on the ends. Like, oh really? Yeah. Hmm. It just there's something about it that's just not. It's not clicking with me. Um, yeah. But I, I can't explain it right now. Hmm. I like the idea. I think it's a. I think it's a neat idea. Yeah. It's a matter of. Um, uh, I might. I might incorporate it a little differently. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Uh. Yeah, it's a. It's an interesting one. I thought. I. I what I want to do is pick either the curve, or the, or the drop down wedge and go with one. Yeah. So, but this has got this stretcher's got to go. It's got to go. One the thing I'm thing thinking of was how big this thing was. Maybe it doesn't have to go. Hold on, that's not what I want. I want one this. thing I was thinking of with that bottom, uh, the bottom stretcher, and and I'd have to do a little research on you know, ergonomics of, of sitting. Mm -hmm. But if you incorporated almost a, a foot pad. You know, make it a place to set your feet, uh, so it holds your feet at a, at a certain ergonomic angle or whatever. I, don't know. So I, I think the actual, um, the real ergonomic way of, of working at a desk is standing. Is what they're finding out now. So yeah, there's a lot of people doing that at work. Um, a lot of people. No, so it's about standard desk height. Yeah. It's it's basically standard. Yeah, that might be an interesting uh, future wood chat, by the way. Hmm. Is uh, 
uh, ergonomics of the way we work in our shop. And you know, yeah, um, if we could get somebody to that knows the human body a bit and we could offer some tips and, and uh, just throwing it out there. That's a good idea. Uh, Mike Mater uh, mentions uh, brought up using IRC chat for the for the chat. I, I think one of the problems that when we first went to using uh, Hangouts for the chat, um, we tried to use Hangouts exclusively without Twitter at all. Yeah, and, where we could have the video and then the comment right. stream below it. But people kind of revolted against that because they they liked having the the Twitter aspect of it. Of it. Um, I don't know if we've moved beyond that or not. We do have people that are watching Twitter. I, I'd be curious to know how many people watch WoodChat and don't participate, don't say anything, but they, they do watch it yeah. um, and follow along on Twitter. So I know last time we tried to change it, it, it kind of yeah. didn't, didn't go. Google Hangouts was having problems back then, too. They, 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 yeah. they, may, they may have made an update that makes it easier. There were people who participated in WoodChat on their phone only, and they used a Twitter client. Um, so we could see Adam is saying that G Google Plus has a text portion of Hangouts now, under, under, up to 100 people in the text with 10 in the video. Um, so you know maybe maybe we'll get together and do a test on that. Um, that would be great because then you could just send people to one page. All the text is there, and the um, the video is there. Um, what would be great is if Google would let you get the transcript of that and overlay it on the video, like we do with some of the uh, wood chats. That took some custom custom development on my part, though. I had to write a program to do that. Um, uh, Adam is saying that they're only seeing my video feed. I just fixed that. I just okay. I just recently fixed that. So, okay. Um, so Scott, you're are you you're the next in the batting order on this one, right? I believe so. I, I've not looked. Let me look here. No, it was the Vic and then you. Okay. So um, I invited Vic in. Cool. I'm uh, I'm excited to see what Vic does with it. Yeah. Yeah. What if those what if those wedges those drops? No, because that's just go no. Sorry, I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> not even that's talking. that's the whole point of the of the uh, the challenge is to, to wait and see what the yeah person does. Well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make my changes to this thing then and not be shy about how many how many things I break. So I yeah, might yeah. I might end up just taking the top and replacing everything else. <laughs> Because I'm gonna have to redo the legs and the stretchers anyway, so we'll see. That might work. That might work. Yeah. Adam's asking how many people follow the follow the Twitter portion of which chat. It depends. Week to week, it's different. Um, week to week, it can be very, very different. So. I mean, I hope it's I hope it's more than just you and me and Adam and Mike. Well, who knows? <laughs> that might be. Yeah. Some yeah. weeks we get lots. Some weeks we get we get fewer. I think this week was a little bit challenging because we started late. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed though is I don't know is Adam signed up in the to take this design. He's not. Adam did so Adam, Adam, why don't we add you to this as well, so that after you uh, we put you on the sheet, so that eventually you get this design as well and can make changes. Hey, uh, can you can you post a link to that list again in the in Twitter? Oh sure. Um, I don't feel like going back to my email to find it. Yeah, I can do that. Here's this. I say. So I guess I could go through Google Drive. 
There's the link. That would be easy. There we go. So Adam is basically saying the transcript is automatically saved and shared and published. And I and I understand that. What I want to be able to do, what I do with the Twitter transcript is I pull it from Twitter and then I upload it to YouTube as a captions file so that people who watch the video later can see what all the Twitter traffic was. Oh really? I had no idea you did that. So well, I haven't done it for all the videos. I'm, I'm behind. Um, but it even does them in the order that the tweets came and how long they came up. Um, I haven't done it for all of them, but um, I would love it if I could do that with the Google Google Plus transcript as well. So the roster is published. So I want Adam. I, I want to encourage you to sign up um, to do the to do the telephone design game challenge and see see how it goes. Oh, you know what people are doing right now, Scott? They're watching watch, hockey. Watching hockey. They're watching hockey. Pete Harbin is watching hockey. Pete, I want you to sign up too. I I like hockey. I should watch more hockey. But for some reason I just I never I can never force myself to watch it. It's not even a force I do like watching it. It's just I never watch it. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. Hockey is a game that I think is way more fun to watch if you're there. Yeah. Right. That's true. Um, to, and to me, that's, that's true with soccer as well. Um, last night, we had the USA versus Panama in Seattle at the same time as a Mar Seattle Mariners game, and the stadiums are right next to each other. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was more people, there was more people at, the, at the soccer game last night. So, I have another idea, Scott. Uh -huh. Because the, des the telephone design game is very serial, where you got one design going through a bunch of different people, we, can actually, we could actually have two going on at the same time. Right? That's good, yeah. So why don't you design something? And put it out, since you're third, and I'm going to take an extra week on this one. Why don't you? Why don't, can we get you to throw something together? Um, <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll. I'll attempt something possibly. Okay. We'll see. I've got. I am pretty much slammed right now. So. Yeah. Um, slammed in a good way. I hope. Yeah. 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 I well, my, this, between. This, go ahead. My own work, and then uh, my wife uh, started a. a a part-time job, and uh, so when she's not, you know, when she's working, I'm in charge of the kids. Gotcha. And, uh, gotcha. So yeah, it's been because she's been working the afternoon, so I'm making dinner and all that stuff. So. Gotcha. This week has been crazy for me. I, I feel like the woodworking jobs come in um, batches. Yeah. Uh, in groups of three. So this week I've got a request for a a king platform bed with drawers underneath, a sewing cabinet. Um, uh, sorry, like a it's almost like a rolling under desk file cabinet, but if it's, it's for somebody who sews. And then uh, two um, what I'll call memory boxes for uh, two little girls whose father passed away in a plane crash. And obviously, those have a time element to them. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, is I'll try and get those up as well. Because we could have multiple design games going on at the same time, right? And cover, cover many in a, in a week. Yeah. So let's see. Adam Maxwell is also not in the design game. So let's see if we can get him to sign up. I just think of, uh, I can't remember his name. 
um, Bucks County Craft Masters. Um, yeah, we've had him, uh, we, no, I know who you're thinking of. It's uh, we've had him in Woodshop. Yeah, it's um, Brian Van Vreedy. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. BC Craft Master. Yeah. 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 That, I was trying to remember his Twitter handle. Yeah, we got to get him signed up as well. He definitely needs to be. Yeah. It's a telephone game design challenge. We're not designing telephones. <laughs> Although that might be interest, interesting. So there was a pretty cool link that I was sent recently that I wanted to take a look at if I can if I can find it. Oh, I know where I can find it. Hold on. So I see that decaf design retweeted. Um, you're, we're thinking of limiting design changes to three decimal changes. I wonder yeah. if that's an auto, an auto retweet because design was in the. I think it is. Yeah. So I get a lot of those, unfortunately. They're not my favorite. All right. So now here's the next thing I wanted to show today. So I'm going to close SketchUp. I'm going to go browser. So when I was thinking about this desk, um, I was thinking about, I've been, I've been thinking in the back of my mind for a while about building what I call a laptop desk. Yeah. It, it's not as deep, um, but it's, it's literally built for somebody using a, a laptop. And then, so what kind of things would I want to incorporate? Power charger, USB hub. Uh, maybe speakers, microphone, webcam, and how could I incorporate these um, where they're not overt? You don't know. You don't really know they're there. And I really like the fact that Chris's desktop dropped, so that if you had connectors in that edge where it dropped, you wouldn't see them unless you were sitting at the desk. So then I found this Pinterest board that I'll share here. Share the link really quick in the chat in Twitter. And I'll screen share some of these things because there's some pretty cool there's some pretty cool elements. Okay, so we had talked a while ago about using Pinterest. Yep. Um, which I've been so, really bad about keeping mine. Yeah, me too. And I, somebody, I don't know how I found this Pinterest board. Somebody sent me a link or whatever, but this is the this is the specific one. Can you see that one? Um, that that doesn't help. That actually doesn't help. This helps. So can you see what they did here? Interesting. On the screen share. Yeah. Yeah, so you got your, your iPad and a couple yeah. of docks for iPhones. And yeah, so they got two phones, a pen, a keyboard, and an iPad docked in a, in a block of wood. So <laughs> kind of, it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. We go back, there's some other ones that are a little bit... Where was the other one? Oh, this is a pretty cool one. Put your iPad Mini in there <laughs> to watch YouTube. This one was very cool, wooden mouse. I can I can get behind that. They just need to make one that's a, it's a, a rollerball. I'm I'm a fan of the roller. The old fashioned roller mice. The, th the thumb. Yeah. Oh, trackball. Trackball, yeah. Trackball, yeah. And I'm surprised this isn't wireless either. Um, yeah. This is very cool. I like the idea of incorporating the speakers. Mm -hmm. 
right? So I was thinking about how you could incorporate that into the desk, some of these things into the desk without them being very noticeable. Yeah. What was there? there was another one in here. It was the wooden headphones. I thought this was pretty cool. Yeah, that's nice. That's very cool. It's very, very sleek. Yeah, it is sleek. Um, have you seen... Um, oh, what's this... I uh, can't think of his Twitter handle or his Facebook. Um, it's in Nashville. I'm talking to folks, I'm going to teach classes over at their, at their place. Uh, he's making these risers. Uh, computer monitorizers so that you can slide your keyboard underneath it. Yeah. Um, out of wood. They're just really slick, really kind of modern, modern kind of look, but um, really basic, really simple, but really, really nice. Look. That's interesting. So, how could we incorporate a keyboard into this, into this desk? Yeah. This one, not really like. Yeah, it's. Uh, doesn't seem to sit on the table flat either, so not really a fan. I'm not a fan of that router. Yeah, OG, crazy OG bit. Yeah. Um, I think this one, I think the log with the speakers might be my favorite. Um, yeah. There was another, I thought there was another one that had speakers. That's what I was trying to find was the other one that had speakers. No, I know what it was. I thought of taking this top one and putting the speakers in the ends so that when you were looking at it, you didn't see it. Oh, yeah. So, but just interesting, or maybe this one, I wanted to put the speakers in the ends in. It was some, basically something like that. So, but how could we incorporate, you know, how could we turn that desk into the ultimate laptop desk without people knowing it if they were um, just touching or using the desk? They don't need to see all the gadgets and gizmos and things like that. So, Anyway, um, those those pictures made me think of uh, sure. Carrie Holtman uh, showed this. He oh posted God, this on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> That's a crime right there. It is horrid. I ended up resharing that one, saying, "Please don't do this." Yeah. So, not only is it bad, I don't want to crap on the guy, um, but the quality is just. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So, all oh, oh, those poor points. One thing I noticed about this is at first I was thinking that he made a replica plane because you can see the planar marks in this English plane. Oh, you can. Yeah. Right? So I thought, oh, he must have made a replica. But then I looked down at his little yellow two button point phone holder. And I said, yeah, there's no way he did that. He couldn't have made that. He did not make a replica plane because he did such a crappy job on the phone holder. Well, you know what those are. Because I was like, why is it that weird look? Those are uh, old, um, let me set it here. Um, set it on one of these. Oh, vintage toy building blocks. Those oh. is what's holding the uh, the iPhone. Great. So, yeah, it's got that going for it. Well, it's still a crime, and I still hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. it. It's a crime. So, but I I shared the because um, he makes some cameras out of old clocks as well, which are aesthetically more appealing, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I shared it with a photographer friend thinking that he would have the horrified, like, no, what did he do that, that we woodworkers had about the uh, the old molding plane? But he looked at it and goes, that's awesome. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, never mind then. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Adam brings up something pretty interesting where you might not need speakers to amplify the sound. So I'll show you I'll show you kind of what he's talking about. 
Um, this would be cool. This would be a very cool thing to pull off. So I don't know if you've seen something like this before. That looks like some instrument of nefarious purposes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a guy who was on Shark Tank who has a similar product. I love that show. Man. It clips onto your iPad, and all it does is just a, it's just a horn like that that redirects the sound actually towards... The, the, the user who's looking at the screen and the amount of amplification you get without any electronics is amazing. Yeah. Um, and so the trick... Bose, is, what's that? Bose, uh, Bose um, the, you know, the, the speaker company, Yeah. that's one of their main shticks. I don't, I don't know if that's the right word, but is, is using the shape and the, the yeah. format of the speaker to amplify sound. Yeah. So it would be cool if you had one of those logs that if the if the sound went down into the log, if you could somehow have a horn shape inside the log to amplify the sound. The the trick that somebody taught me was um, if you have a big like drinking glass, mm -hmm. when you're playing music on your phone, put your phone in the glass, obviously with no water. <laughs> and, it, and everything gets louder, so that would be cool to make. If you put it in the water, it's a completely desk. different that, audio effect. Yeah, it would be cool to make the ultimate laptop top desk that had awesome audio without needing an amplifier or power for, to do that. So that's getting kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, Adam's pointing out that on that, on that yeah plane that the, the guy screwed up. He put the, the wedge upside, upside down. down. Which is funny. I wonder what I that guy did with all the planes. Yeah, you know, that guy removed all the blades from those. So he sold a few of those. If you go through his, his history, he sold uh, at least a, a couple of them, and probably made a lot more than that. So yeah, I wonder what he's done with all those blades. Because sometimes that's you know, even if the body's not good, you can at least refurb the blade into a new plane. I wouldn't doubt it if he's using a them. Open paint can. Yeah. <laughs> so he cut them up to make the the hands of his clocks. <laughs> <laughs> paint scrapers. Who knows? <laughs> okay, Scott. What do you think? What's next? Um, I don't know. Um. We are technically past time, even though we started late. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it's eight. <coughs> so. a, a little shameless self promotion here. I've got I've got two new planes. Well, two new sizes of, of planes available. Two um, new styles? Not not a new style, but my joiner plane, which was previous, just a uh, I had the twenty eight inch and the thirty six inch. Yeah. Uh, I now have a, a twenty two inch version of that available. Um. And then a uh, a twelve inch jack plane. My regular jack is sixteen inches, but I use a I use a twelve inch version um, all the time myself. Uh, it's it's a great size. And so I took that plane and I I uh, asking around at Handworks, just yeah. asked you know, hey, would this be a good size? You know, can you see me you know, offering this? So for what it's worth, those are those are both available. You know, to know. Also, my um, my summer class schedule is on the is is up now for plane making classes. So. Oh, hey, I know what I was going to ask you. Yeah, tell me about the charity auction. Oh, and the eBay debacle and getting that yeah. restored, and then what the uh, bids are up to now. Well, it, it did end up selling actually a couple days ago. Okay, so it's closed uh, out now. Yep. Was it up to seven ninety? I think the last time I saw it, or seven something. Yeah, it, it sold for seven ninety. Oh, that's very and, cool. Uh, um, so three hundred ninety-five dollars. I've got um, I got two families. Well, I guess a little background. Um, let me see if I can find the, the posting here real quick. Um, I'll screen share it. Um, 
Sorry, the windows here. Uh, screen share this this no this one. Okay, so uh, this is a, a mesquite and African blackwood plane that I uh, I have had, and originally it was supposed to be um, I was originally giving it to as a door prize at the handwork show, and the person whose name was drawn ended up not even making it to the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just, you know, he didn't feel right taking it and, um, since he wasn't at the show. And then it, obviously at that point, there wasn't a possibility to redraw another name since the show was over. So I decided I wanted to do something special with this plane. So if you can see on the picture here, um, there's some... Uh, there's some nice curl in uh, that in that uh, mesquite there, and it was just it was such a I was so proud of it, and it was my favorite plane I've made yet, in, in my opinion. So, um, just cycle through the other pictures here too while I'm talking, but um, so I just wanted to do something special with the, with the plane, and decided to donate it or to put it up for auction on uh, on eBay. And with the intention of giving 50% of the proceeds uh, to the relief efforts in more uh, more Oklahoma from the tornadoes that they recently had. So, um, so I, I got it posted. The post the listing was up for two days. It was up to $660, and I woke up on the the third day of the listing to an email from eBay saying that they had removed it. Without any, they didn't give me any reason why, they just said that um, it had been removed for for security concerns. Actually, they didn't even tell me security concerns. The email that they sent out to people who had bid said it was for security concerns. They just said in my email to contact them because of concerns. So I spent three hours, three hours on the phone, two hours of that on hold with eBay trying to get this situation uh, rectified. Well, they, um, it, it was a mess. I mean, I'm, I'm still completely disgusted with eBay and the way they did it. Basically what happened, because it was the first item I've sold on eBay mm -hmm. with this account, this is a different account than I've, than I've sold things on before. Um, it was flat as being a suspicious, uh, a suspicious listing. And what I argued with them about was, okay, if this was my, you knew this was my first item I was selling. It was obvious that it was my first item I was selling. It should have stopped me when I went to list the item and said, hey, let's confirm a few things with you as a new seller. Yeah. So that we don't remove your listing after two days and it's up to six hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what they did when they removed the listing was also removed all of the bits and emailed all of the bidders and said, uh, we have a security concern with this listing, so it's been removed. Wow. None of the people who bid on it, so a couple of them reached out to me about it, none of them received an email to say that it was relisted when I finally got everything taken care of, even though you basically said that they, they that it would send out a message. Well, it didn't get sent out. Um, I will give eBay this. They they did not charge me a listing fee, and they did not charge me a sales fee at the end. Um, but that's the only good I can say about the entire situation. So, luckily, it, it did go back up over the 660 that had originally been bid. Yeah. Uh, one of the people that were that were in the bidding war at the time that it was taken down. Uh, there's three people, three main people are bidding on it. Uh, they never even came back to bid on it the second time. So um, I can only imagine you lost. A, you lost a bidder, basically. Yeah, yeah. So I think he that was the bidder that could have pushed it higher than. Yeah, who knows? Um, my what what I kind of had uh, 
as a goal, and it still sold for for more than what I would have sold. Or, you know, my price on it would have been six fifty. Mm-hmm. Is my regular price that I listed on the website. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was kind of hoping. You know, I, I was given fifty percent. If it had hit like thirteen hundred or, or more, I. I still would have only kept six fifty. So if it had gone, say fifteen hundred, everything yeah. above six fifty, I was good. Right. So I was kind of hoping it would keep going higher, um, but I can't complain at all about about selling for seven ninety. So. Yeah. So yeah. I, right now I have two families, um, two different people have recommended families that have been wiped out from the storm. The you know their house and cars and everything. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to decide between the two families which uh, whether to split the split the amount the three hundred ninety five dollars or to uh, just give it all to, to one family. Yeah. Uh, in the form of a gift card. So I'm probably gonna let my daughter choose. Oh, that's a good idea. So, that's a good so, idea. But yeah, they I've got pictures of both of their house just demolished, completely wiped out. The the devastation is just it's amazing how powerful those tornadoes are. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, people have showed me the, one of the one of the illustrations that was done in Seattle to get people to kind of recognize how bad the storm was. Um, was I can't remember if it was a local news station or one of the local weather bloggers. Basically, took the storm map at scale. And put it over the Puget Sound area at scale, so that people could see if this thing passed through here, what kind of effect it would have had. Oh yeah. And uh, it was pretty dramatic. I mean, it was a yeah. big, big swath of destruction. So. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. A lot bigger, a lot bigger than people kind of realize. You see, you might see one neighborhood on TV, but when you look at the whole, look at the whole thing from the sky, dramatic. So. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm I'm happy with with where I live. The mountains kind of split up the storms, and they just kind of go around us. So. Yeah, we don't get tornadoes or hurricanes. We get rain, rain and rain yeah. here. We get earthquakes. You're not even close enough to earthquakes, are you? No, Seattle gets earthquakes. Okay. Yeah, um, but they're not nowhere near as bad as California. Yeah. But we had a big Seattle earthquake not within the last decade or fifteen years. Um, and it it definitely caused some damage um, in downtown, especially. Yeah, I I lived in Southern California for for a little over two years, and there's one minor like little jolt of an earthquake that I that I felt while I was there. And I was at, mm-hmm. I was at I was in an office job at the time, and and uh, I was sitting at my desk, and all of a sudden I just kind of went, whoop. <laughs> What? What was that? Yeah. But it was, that's all it was, so. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, but we do, we do get them. We've had, definitely had some, um, yeah, I think it was 2001 we had a, a pretty big one. So I guess that was 12 years ago. Um, and there were, there were buildings downtown where Bricks falling, people damaged, all kinds of stuff. So yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, why don't we wrap it up? So let's talk about what we're going to do next week. Um, we might start. Next some week we'll more. have Megan. What's that? Next week we will have Megan. Next week we'll have Megan. Um, we probably won't talk too much about the design updates. Um, we'll talk with we'll talk with Megan, but I'm going to take that file and um, and do do the rest of the changes. Probably get some more people signed up for some of the design challenges, the telephone design, telephone game design challenge. Yeah. And maybe, maybe get some more designs out there so that we can look at three or four of these uh, in a in a in 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 a week, three or four a week. Um, it'd be yeah. Cool to have multiple going on. Yeah. Um, I think we should at least uh, show it to Megan and and see yeah. what see what yeah. she would change on it if she was going to do it. So absolutely. Um, and maybe the next one is if you can get one going, that'd be cool. Maybe the next one I'll do is the bed that I'm getting ready to do a bid on. If not the bed, I'll do the sewing cabinet. I'm I'm further along on that one. That's a little bit uninteresting though. The, the, the sewing cabinet's a little bit uninteresting. So not a lot of design there. It's a very utilitarian piece. So yeah. 
Um, okay. Uh, I have, ooh, ooh. I have a couple, you know, a couple designs that I just have done of other things. I could just use an existing design and throw it out there. Um, if, uh, if worst case, you know. Yeah. But, um, just, just for, uh, just to clarify, the Megan we're talking about is uh, Megan Fitzpatrick from. Um, from Pop Woodworking. Woodworking. So. Yeah. So That'll be fun to talk with her. We can talk to her about uh, Woodworking in America. We can talk to her about. Uh, the Handworks event. We can talk to her about how the magazine's going, um, they and how um, Chuck Bender's doing in his new job. Yeah. So that'd be cool. Yeah, he's already started there. Yeah, he has. He had to move. So cool. All right, everybody. Well, that's it for Wood Chat for June twelfth. We'll see you next week, nineteenth, seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Eastern. We'll try and get the chat part figured out. We're sorry that tweet chat was acquired and shut down. Um, but if not, we'll just do the hangout and we'll follow on Twitter again. Um, next week we'll be talking to Megan Fitzpatrick, as we said. We'll also take a look at the changes to the table I'm going to make and maybe get some other designs in flight. If you've got a design that you – maybe even you did it a while ago and you kind of got stuck, um, you might as well bring it to wood chat and maybe we can um, I'll send it around through the – Telephone game design challenge. You got that right that time, and see what people can do with it. Um, Scott, you want to sign off? Yeah. Uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out wood chat with us. Uh, I'm Scott Meek. Scott Meek Woodworks. You can find me at Miss Meek Woodworks on Twitter and scottmeekwoodworks.com. And this gentleman to one side or the other of me is uh, Matt Gradwall. You can find me on the web at Uppercut Wood. In the meantime, between now and next week, go sign up for Scott's hand plane class. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll see you next week. Have a good week. Yeah.